I would consider, I think quite a lot of people consider, The Time Metal to be one of the first Doctor's finest serials. An excellent little storyline, which is the first of the Doctor Who narratives to introduce another time traveller, another of the Doctor's race in this case, another, we're not, they're not called Time Lords at this point in time, but another Time Lord essentially, disguised as an English monk during 1066, around the time of William the Conqueror's invasion and the uh, the deposing um, Harold God, Harold Godwardson. William Hartnell is excellent, the actor who portrays the monk, who, let me just double check, yeah, his name is Peter Butterworth, fantastic, he later re reappears in the Daleks Master Plan. It's an excellent introduction to um, Stephen Taylor as a companion. Peter Purvis is a very engaging actor. Of course, uh, Vicky is v Maureen O'Brien's Vicky is great and assertive as she usually is. Uh, you know, sad as it was to see Susan go, she's a she's a great replacement for Susan. I think a superior character overall. Let's read out aloud the conception and writing of this particular episode. Oh, and I'd just like to mention actually one of the first instances in which a serial is entirely directed. I think the second after the Crusade, the first serial or ill episodes were directed by Douglas Canfield and this is one of the finest directed best looking Doctor Who serials up to this point the the anachronistic nature of a really great Doctor Who period piece as opposed to just you know being an excuse to set a little show within you know Kubla Khan's palace or the third crusade or the French Revolution the reign of terror Robespierre there's this effort to craft an interesting time travel storyline with with an historical setting which involves and a relate a relation with the present day or something otherwise uncanny or otherworldly a great prototype for a, a likable serial or third doctors the time warrior anyway the conception and writing outgoing story editor dennis spooner was commissioned by producer verity lambert to write a story introducing new companions to even taylor as story editors commissioning themselves was discouraged. Lambert justified his involvement to head of serials Donald Wilson, citing complications with contracts and budgets and insufficient time to brief an uninvolved writer as none of the regular writers were available. Spooner was approved to write the serial on the 15th of March 1965. Mm. Spooner wanted the show to move away from pure historical stories like The Reign of Terror 1964 and The Romans 1965, instead hoping to blend them with the show's more futuristic serials. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Spooner, my friend. The Time Meddler was the first serial under new story editor Donald Tosh, having been offered to work on either 199 Park Lane or Doctor Who after the cancellation of Compact. He joined the show in April 1965 and was provided with a document titled History of Doctor Who, outlining the show's story to date, including some upcoming. Tosh enjoyed Spooner's idea of blending historical and futuristic stories. He edited little of Spooner's work. The serial's working title was Doctor Who in the Monk, the title of The Time Meddler was not final until early June 1965. Production assistant David Maloney joked that the story was referred to as the Vikings Dream production to the realisation that it had more Saxon extras, upon which it was called the Saxons. The first episode was originally called The Paradox, changed to The Watcher on the 20th of May. The serial was produced at a low cost to offset the expense of the previous serial, The Chase, 1965. Douglas Camfield was assigned as a director in April, having recently finished work on The Crusade, 1965. He was pleased with Spoon and Scripps, finding them among his best, certainly. Due to the limited expenses allocated to the serial, Canfield forewent an incidental score, instead opting for percussive drum beats played by Charles Botterill, who had previously played percussion on Tristan Carey's score for Marco Polo, 1964. Botterill recorded eight minutes of music for the second through fourth episodes at Lime Grove Studios in the Studio R on the 9th of June. The remainder of the score was sourced from stock music, set designer Barry Newbury constructed the Saxon's hut in the style of a crock painting the studio for black to resemble oxblood. Time Metal episode 1 is, or ends with a really strong cliffhanger, as I'm sure you'll see in very sped up form here.